Hello everyone, cruising along in uh, Citation Ultra this afternoon, flying along on another uh, long empty leg, and I'd like to talk about the display controller that uh, changes some settings and display uh, configurations on the uh, flight display in Citation Ultra and Citation Encore aircraft. The first thing I'll say is that uh, the display controller varies slightly even uh, between various Ultras and uh, the Encore. Uh, if you're flying a, an Ultra that is in the first 400 serial numbers, this particular Ultra is one of the first 400 Ultras produced, um, you get a uh, full slash weather button as the first button, and uh, that is replaced in the newer airplanes with something known as an HSI button. Um, and they're very similar uh, in that they basically adjust what the HSI looks like and how the HSI is configured. Um, so uh, the uh, default mode looks like this. It's a um, pretty much a round compass display um, and uh, like a 360 degree compass. And whenever we press the full slash weather button, it just toggles into uh, what is known technically as a weather display or also uh, an arc display for an HSI. So you can see that the uh, display changes there. This is also uh, capable of displaying our onboard weather radar in this mode. So if we're navigating around some thunderstorms, uh, trying to work our way through a line of cells, uh, if you don't want to uh, be looking at the uh, multifunction display for the weather radar and you want to have everything right in front of you, um, this would be the way, the way to do it. And uh, notice that we have our weather radar in standby right now uh, with a four degree tilt up. So you can see if the weather radar is turned on or not and you can see what the tilt is uh, when this is in this mode. So um, that's the, the first button to know about. The second button we'll talk about here is the SC slash CP button. That stands for the single Q slash cross pointer flight director mode. And uh, the default is the uh, single Q. When we first power up the system, that's what we would get by default. Uh, it's uh, what's being displayed right now. Just to show you the difference here, I'll turn the flight director off on this side. And uh, notice that there's no flight director displayed right now. And as soon as I put it uh, into a, a flight director mode, uh, we get this single Q indication it's known as. If we press the uh, single Q cross pointer button, it toggles into the cross pointer mode. So it's really just a, a different display saying the exact same thing, but some pilots prefer one versus the other. Um, I've heard this as a Boeing versus Airbus thing, like a, a some, I can't remember, I, I, honestly, I don't have any time in Boeings or Airbuses, so I don't know uh, exactly what the difference is there, but uh, it's basically just a, a, a Ford versus Chevy debate. It's, it's whatever you like better. Uh, it's giving you the exact same information. Next button in the list is the uh, ground speed slash time to go button, the G speed over TTG. That's going to change our ground speed indicator down here in the lower right corner. It's just a toggle that uh, flips to time to go. We've got 133 minutes to our next waypoint, or we can look and see that we're going 368 knots across the ground. Uh, it's really just as simple of a toggle as that. Next in line, we have the ET, or elapsed time button. Uh, this button will uh, work as a simple timer. So whenever I press it, it replaces the ground speed uh, function in the lower right, and it displays the elapsed time. I press it again, it starts a timer. You see it counting up. This would be like if you're flying a timed instrument approach of some kind, or uh, you need to, uh, well, there's any kind of number of reasons why you might want to set a timer in flight, but uh, the bottom line is if you need a timer, that's how you get one started. And then when you want to stop it and reset it, you press it again. You see that the timer stops. Press it one more time, it resets. Press it one more time, it starts up again. And on and on each cycle 
just goes through the cycles like that. And uh, then you can display ground speed, time to go, using the other buttons. Okay, this next button here, known as the Air Data Computer button, the uh, ADC button, is unique to the first 400 serial numbers again. Uh, this button will use the ADC on the opposite side, uh, the air data computer for the opposite side. So we have two air data computers. Um, right now I'm sitting on the co-pilot side. So this would normally be running off ADC number two on this side. And if I press the ADC button, it reverts to air data computer one. So it's using the pilot side air data computer and uh, displays ADC1 up in the upper left side of the screen to let you know that that's what it's doing. That would be if you have an ADC failure, you can manually revert to uh, the other box and force it to use the, the operative air data computer. And as soon as I press that button again, it toggles back and, uh, and is using ADC2 by default. Now the nav and the FMS buttons uh, are just toggles for uh, displaying the nav sources on the HSI. So uh, if I press the uh, nav button, it's as simple as displaying, in this case, nav 2 to start with since I'm on the co-pilot side, or nav 1 uh, since I'm on the co-pilot side. That's the, uh, the second choice. So I can toggle between uh, the nav radios. And uh, with the FMS button, it displays FMS 2 and then FMS 1 and back and forth like that. So uh, because of the avionics configuration we have in this airplane, even on the co-pilot side, uh, we normally run FMS-1 here. Um, but in uh, most airplanes, if you had only one FMS, you would run FMS-1, or if you had two, you'd run FMS-2 on the co-pilot side. Um, but that's just a, a toggle switch to uh, display what navigation source you're using on, on the needle on the HSI. Now to show you the uh, bearing pointers and what they do, uh, we uh, can turn bearing pointers on and off using either uh, the bearing one or bearing two. They're, or it's kind of like a bearing with a circle and a bearing with a, a uh, diamond. Um, they're both turned off right now. And these are just uh, simple needles. They look like uh, uh, kind of like an ADF signal, an automatic direction finder for those pilots who are old enough to know what that is. Uh, it's a simple needle just pointing to whatever the waypoint is or the station is. So like right now I have the pecan VOR dialed into nav one and uh, we were flying down uh, in uh, near uh, Dothan, Alabama. We're to the uh, southwest of this station. So the station is off our right wing. If I turn on nav one for the bearing pointer, notice that the uh, the needle just points directly to the station. It's kind of uh, behind our right wing right now. And notice that the circle uh, on the um, symbol there appears as a circle on the needle. And then we could do the same thing with uh, bearing pointer two. I, I don't believe I have anything. In nav, I don't believe I have anything in uh, nav two right now. Um, so if I pull nav two up for a bearing pointer, it's not going to show anything. Uh, but you can see that VOR1 is represented by a circle, VOR2 is represented by a diamond, and uh, that's how we would display uh, needles just directly pointing to a waypoint. Next I'll show you here the uh, dim, dimming knob, the, uh, the outer concentric knob it's known as. Uh, this is the, the big knob here on the outside. It's two different levels to the knob. And if I turn this down, this is how I would uh, dim the display. So this would be used at night to dim it. And if I were to turn that all the way to the off position and turn the display off, it would enter reversionary mode and it would take all these flight instruments and send them to the multifunction display. We also have uh, an inner concentric ring. It's called the decision height knob. And uh, that uh, knob, the smaller knob here, corresponds to the decision height when we're flying an instrument approach. It sets a reference for our decision height. So notice that as I twist this, it was displaying 250 feet AGL. Now it's 200 feet AGL. Uh, so that's how we set up the decision height flying an instrument approach. We also have a couple of buttons and knobs down here on the lower portion of the display. 
This is the uh, inches slash hectopascals selector. This is used in international flying. Uh, in the United States, obviously, we use inches of mercury. Uh, and, and that's uh, what's being displayed up here right now. 29.92 is standard uh, above 18,000 feet. And uh, whenever we press this button, we can, say, we can see in hectopascals what it would be. It also displays our altitude in meters rather than in feet. Uh, so this, uh, my, my international experience is primarily in the Caribbean, uh, but there's some island nations in the Caribbean that uh, use hectopascals and meters. And uh, when we're going international, depending on which country we go to, if that's the, the local standard, uh, that's how we toggle that on and off to be able to talk to the local controllers and uh, have everybody on the same page about what altitude we're flying at. We can also use the shortcut knob labeled standard to set the standard 29.92 inches in. Um, and the barrow knob manually adjusts the, uh, the altimeter when we're outside the flight levels. So we can, we can set in how, whatever the local altimeter setting is using barrow. And then as we cross into flight level 180, 18,000 feet, press the standard button and uh, it will automatically revert to 29.92 on the altimeter. The last uh, indications I want to show you down here are the uh, heading reversionary and attitude reversionary buttons. Uh, these are tucked away in the lower por portion of the panel. And uh, what they do is uh, they're similar to the ADC button above. In fact, on the newer uh, models of uh, Ultras and Encores, they don't have the ADC button up on the display controller. They just have it down here as a third button in this area. And uh, the uh, heading reversionary mode um, on the co-pilot side reverts to magnetometer number one, like the pilot side magnetometer. So if I press that, Notice that we have mag one displayed, uh, meaning that the magnetic compass is coming from the uh, pilot side. And press it again, and it uses the uh, number two magnetometer. Um, attitude reversionary mode is the uh, similar setup with the AHARS unit, the attitude and heading reference system. And when I press that, we get attitude one displayed up on the uh, on the uh, attitude indicator. I'm going to toggle that again. That pretty well sums up the uh, ways that we can customize our display, set it up for whatever our preferences are, or whatever we're doing. Uh, otherwise, it's a, a just a, a six pack of instruments like you see in any other airplane. We've got the uh, airspeed indicator on the left, the uh, attitude indicator in the center, the altimeter on the right, with the heading information in the center and the VSR, or I'm sorry, the VSI on the uh, lower right side of the display. Uh, we have uh, a Mach meter, so this is our um, current Mach number displayed below our indicated airspeed, our desired track for navigation, uh, the uh, distance readout to our next waypoint, 723 nautical miles in this case, uh, the heading, uh, bug is uh, displayed here what the exact heading is down to the degree. Uh, the computer is calculating our winds aloft uh, and uh, a little arrow that shows uh, what direction the wind is blowing from. So we have 14 knots of wind um, or 13 knots of wind uh, from our uh, kind of a quartering left to right headwind right now. Uh, and then at the top we also see that the autopilot is engaged and right now we're driving the autopilot off of the um, off of the uh, pilot side display, which is kind of the standard. Uh, and uh, it doesn't really matter what modes I have my flight director mode selector panel is because it's not affecting the autopilot. So uh, right now it's in roll mode and pitch mode, but I could lock it to the nav and uh, lock it to the current altitude, and it would display those modes up at the top and uh, the arrow up here at the top indicates which uh, side is driving the autopilot. So it points to the left, meaning that the left side uh, of the uh, flight director is, like in this case, the pilot side flight director is driving the autopilot so that everybody knows when we engage the autopilot what commands it's going to follow. And uh, 
that's uh, that's pretty much our system. Hopefully this gives you a good uh, rundown of how it works and uh, makes you a little bit more prepared to fly uh, an Ultra or an Encore for the first time.